Hey everybody, Wayne here. In today's video, I'm going to do an overview and review of Space Infantry Federation. Um, this is by Nathan Hansen and published by Lock and Load Publishing, just released. Um, this is a States of Siege style game that is, as you can tell, futuristic, set in space. Um, you are commanding basically the human empire, solar system, Terran empire, whatever you want to call it. Um, and there are multiple alien forces that you may start off at, uh, at peace with them. You may be at peace to start, but eventually you may end up at war with them. Um, your goal in the game is to, while defending yourself and defending your system, which like uh, most Stasis of Siege games, you know, you just kind of start off in the middle here. Your goal as a humans is to colonize different planets on this central map here. If you're able to put bases on each of them, you win the game. Um, you can lose through a different, bunch of different methods, but basically the key is you want to get out to these bases, colonize them as fast as possible, because as time goes by, they're gonna, the aliens are all going to be building up in strength, and they're going to start spawning on the map, and they're going to start coming after you. Before I get any further, um, let's talk about this game a little bit. Um, we're going to talk about my, kind of my what I plan to do here. So like I said, I'm going to do an overview. There's a lot to the game, so I'm not going to cover every single thing. Um, the OG, original Grognard, Devin, who works from Lock and Load Publishing, I believe. Um, he has a couple good videos out as well, really good in-depth videos. Uh, those are worth checking out um, if you want kind of a different viewpoint, someone from Lock and Load Publishing. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of cover, cover an overview here. There's the main board. I'm going to go over. I'm going to zoom in here and we'll go over. There's an event board. There's a politics board to the left here, politics and war effort, um, also with the activation chits. And then to the right here, there's a research and resource board. I'm going to go over each of them. Maybe we'll play through a turn or two, um, and then I'll give you my review. But I am going to have another video up where I'm going to do a full playthrough. Now, I'll be honest, this game has a really large footprint for a what seemed like it was a, like a Ziploc game. So it actually has a large footprint. So it's going to be really hard to keep it all on camera, but I'll try to get what I can. Um, actually, for this, I busted out my old tripod. Usually I use like an overhead camera setup. I busted out my tripod um, just for this particular video. Um, so let's go ahead and... Uh, dive into it all right so like i said before this is the main board we're zoomed in on that right now um, the main board is going to be the your soul system um, this is a flagship counter representing a terran flagship uh, and then each of the other races and then the mercenaries that you play against so um, what you have here you can kind of see there are four different main colors there's five colors on the board um, the yellow are the chthonians so those are aliens. All they're all yellow, or excuse me, they're all aliens except the blue one. So yellow are the Chthonians. The red are the flesh eaters. <laughs> Creepy. Um, green is the cybers, or like cyborgs. Um, and then white are the mutants. Now those are the actual like alien forces. That you can see there are planets named spaces, right? So there's squares, and then you can see the circle planets. Those are the named spaces you're going to want to colonize. Um, and then you have the mercenaries here, so they're blue. Those are, I don't know what you would just call them, the Terrans that like money, right? The other humans that like money. Um, and so they'll harass you, but obviously they're not like a primary foe. Um, they actually start off at war with you, which we'll get into that when we go to the politics and warfare track, versus everyone else actually starts off um, at peace with you. So you actually start off the game at peace. You're here, you start off, and this is the beginning setup. Um, you have your flagship here, and this is where you're going to be moving flags. You're going to be um, building flagships, moving them, and then colonizing, like I said. Um, the game is built on resources. Um, as time goes by, you're going to get resources. You can see this little icon here. Hopefully, you can see it. There's a gear on there. Let me actually grab another just to show you. This is an example of a base that you would build. And you can see there's these are resources. They're called build resources. We'll get into those in a second. Um, let me go over to the resource pool, but see, there's a gear icon with a wrench in it. That basically gives you like, um, a die roll is what it does. So you're going to, every turn you're going to be generating resources by rolling dice and those resources, the more of those gears you have, right? The more dice you can roll, the more resources you have, which allow you to build more fleets, move them farther, conduct research, um, conduct diplomacy, improve morale, et cetera, et cetera. So looking at this main map here, you can see the different numbered spaces, um, the different each of the different alien races and the mercenaries. You see they have this track here, 
That's her logo. These are ships that will spawn, or fleets, I should say. Um, the top right is her combat value. And you have different types of them. Three different types. Actually, there's another one that gets researched by one of the enemies as well. But there's raider fleets, excuse me, scout fleets with the one ship, raider fleets with two, and then the um, battle fleets with three. So they are, are invasion fleets. They call them invasion fleets. Um, but these are spawning depending on the chits you draw. They come on the map, and then depending on what type of unit they are, they may just move down the numbers heading towards Seoul. They may stop off at if you have a, you know, colonize a planet and attack there to try to eliminate your colony, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You never know what's going to happen. At the same time, you can see these numbered tracks, two through six, two through six, that each race has. Those are technology tracks. Now, there are stacks of counters. You can't really see them. I have them off the map here. But these are alien technologies. And you'll draw one randomly when they gain a technology. And you'll go ahead and look at it. And it'll tell you a certain thing, ability they may gain. For instance, this one is the flats, the fast scout technology. Which means that their scouts are going to activate more often and move more often. Um, and there are different technologies that can happen. Um, the... The green guys, the cybers down here, they have a doom fleet technology. When that spawns, that pops on the map, and that's a really strong invasion fleet that's going to head right to Seoul. Um, and you better watch out when that happens. So, um, I'm trying to think of anything else I need to tell you guys on the main board. I think that's it. Like I said, a lot of this stuff is, I have to explain separately, but I just wanted to give you guys a, a little example of kind of the main board, the different things on the main board. Um, and how each of the things on here works. So let's dive over to the politics and war effort and activation board. All right, so this is the politics, war effort, well, research technologies and activation queue board here um, called the politics board. So a couple of key things on here, actually three really important things. So we'll start at the top, work our way down. The top is politics. Um, so as you can see, let me grab my tweezers here um you can see that there's the different factions right so you have the chthonians you have the mutants um you have the cybers you have the flesh eaters and then you have um their kind of relationships towards each other they start everything starts off at neutral right here um but they could be at war they can have an alliance with each other and those are then going to impact the different actions that happen when you draw your chits which are down here and we'll get to those once we work our way down um, different things are going to happen, right? Makes sense. It's a normal chit draw type of game. Stays the siege style game. Um, well, depending on what's going on, it will influence um, what happens. So you may have a certain action that says, hey, if these two groups, so say it says the if they're at war, right? So if the cybers and the mutants are at war, it may say if you have a base in one of their territories, that base takes a hit. Basically, like you get caught up in their war. At the same time, if they're at war, they're not paying as much attention to you. So their actual war effort, which we'll get to in a second, will be reduced when it comes to uh, fighting you. All right. You also keep track of your couple tracks for you, for your Terran Empire here. So desire, that's expansion desire here. It's either at zero or one. Stability, the higher the better. You know, more of a stable empire. And then losses, if you take losses, it goes up. Once it reaches two, you take an additional losses. You start losing stability. Drops to zero. You're going to lose, basically erupts into civil war chaos you're going to lose based on that all right go down to the war effort here so as i said before everyone starts off at peace against you and they have their markers here except for the mercenaries you were at total war with them now a couple of really important things about the war effort um board here first one when you are drawing and it has different icons on there generally speaking you're gonna look to see, so it'll have, it'll say who who it is. So, and we'll get into these in more in a second. But say this one is a flesh eater. You can see the logo on the top left, and it's the advance icon. And I'll explain these in a sec. Um, what you can do, ooh, let me actually grab that one again. I wanna show you guys on the board here. I think I tossed it, there it is. So, you look at the flesh eaters which right now they're at peace and you look all the way over to the right so to the far right of the row and there's a greed symbol there's a border friction and there's a press action you don't see the advance action up here so because they're at peace they won't conduct that action so you consider it no effect same thing say they were down here in the cold war status with you again 
there's no advance. They had a technology icon, but no advance. Again, mobilize, not there. And they have to go all the way down to war. So basically, for the advance action, they're going to have to be at war or at total war against you. And so for every action you're drawing, right, all these different chits, you're going to be able to look. You look at the faction you're going against, in this case, Flood Sheeters. You check Peace, Cold War, Mobilize War, Total War, and you see if they're even going to be able to do that action. It's a really neat way of showing that as their war effort increases, right, as they work their way down the track heading towards Total War with you, it opens up their options. Are they even going to spawn fleets? Are they going to send fleets against you? Or are they just going to chill? You know, they're always going to do, I'm sure they always do something, but there's always a couple actions available even up here at Peace. But as time goes by, it opens up more possibilities for what they're going to do. Now, that was the war effort track. Now, we'll go down to the... I'm skipping research technologies. Obviously, understand as you research technologies, you put them here, and that'll be over on the other board, which we'll cover next. So, there's an activation queue, an activation token holding box. The game is chit-driven. So, like most Stasis Siege games, it's either going to be chit-driven or card-driven. This one's chit-driven. So, you're going to have your, you know, little draw cup full, and you're going to start drawing. And then what you're going to do is as you draw them, so you're gonna get, okay, Chthonian's technology. You just set them in these boxes. Draw, set them in the box. Draw, set in the box, et cetera, et cetera. Um, until you get to, until you either fill the box up or you get to this symbol up here, this like, oops, sorry, to make sure you guys can see that. That like shield symbol, that is the, your turn. That's the Federation turn. That's called the Federation. I keep, I keep calling it an empire, like Terran empire. It's the Federation, my bad. Um, so when it's a Federation turn, that's when you're going to go ahead and go edit back, go back. Every time I said Terran Empire, I meant Federation. My bad. All right. So that's Federation symbol. Like I said, so that would be your turn. Then you stop. You re you're sitting there resolving actions. You finish yours, resolving yours. Then you go ahead, you put everything back um, into the cup and you start drawing again. So basically it'll be a series of alien faction actions until you get to the Federation turn. You'll conduct your turn, then everything goes back in the cup, um, and then you restart again. Um, yep, I think that is covers the politics and war effort board. All right, here we have the research um, resource bo uh, box here, uh, board. Um, what you're doing is you're keeping track of your research up here. You're keeping track of the current resources that are on the track the stored resources, the resource pool, and then all the locked assets, as well as assets you've yet to build. I know it's a lot of boxes. We've covered a lot of boxes. We've looked at a lot of boxes. Trust me, I'm gonna cover this in my review. You get used to it, okay? It is a lot to start off with, but you do get used to it. So let me just kind of explain it here for you guys. Um, the game is built on, remember it's built on those little, you know, little wrenches and gears, right? You're rolling dice, you're getting resources. Game is driven by these resources that allows you to move, to buy, to build, to do basically everything you're going to do. Um, the resources are going to start off. You have a stored resource pool down here. You're going to start off with five. I have it all set up for the beginning. Um, but then what you would do is to take the beginning of your game. You have five, which you get to pick. The game recommends a certain allotment, but you can pick whatever five you want. And then you have the resource pool up here. These are the resources that are available. You're not buying resources. You're rolling for them, remember? Um, and it's very simple. You can see the resource track here has a one through six. And depending on how many gears, those gears and wrenches you have, you're going to roll. So if you had so the beginning of the game, very first turn, you just have soul, which just has one. So you're going to roll a one D six. Okay. That was a horrible roll. Say I rolled a five because that's, let's do that. You can find the five spot here. I like to put the dice next to it to mark it. And now what I can do is from the resource pool, I can pick any resource I want. Uh, let's just say I want to build resource here. I can go ahead and I can place it on this first um, column here for five. Boom, you have that resource. And then after you roll, everything moves down one. So if you had a bunch of resources here, they would move down one. When they get to this bottom row here, they can be spent. Any can, can be spent from stored, can be spent from here. All, all the only thing that matters is that once this your turn is over, any of them that are here have to have room to go over to stored. You can't stack them; it has to be one at a time. So only store five resources at the most. Otherwise, they'll get discarded, eliminated. Um, one of the keys is you notice the resource track. So you have this column here. That's who you start the game with. There's actually you can see the um, morale resource here, which. 
Maybe I should go over the resources just quick, just so you guys know. There's a warp resource, which is not on the, doesn't start here, it starts over here. You have to unlock it later. There's research, which obviously is like a little beaker. There's morale, which looks like a metal. There's maneuver. There's build. There's diplomacy. And there's espionage. Um, if you notice, though, there's a morale, like a faded morale icon. If you're able to get one of those resources, or if you have one at start, let's say, you can you can um, place it there. And then what will happen is, um, which they call it deploy. So it gets deployed here is the official game term. And now it opens up this column. And so now when you roll, so say before I rolled a five and I had one and I already had a resource there and I rolled a five, but I only had the one column. I could not pick another resource because the resource was already taking up the spot. But if I had had this deployed already and had this column and I rolled another five, I could say, perfect. Don't worry. I have another column. I'm going to go ahead and put a maneuver resource there. So it, what it becomes is, as time goes by, right, you're get, gathering more resources from your, um, from Seoul, and then from your colonies. Because remember, I told you before, and I'll, I'll look, we'll take a look at these in a second, your colonies have, that you build, have those little gear icons. So they're going to give you more production, which allows you to roll more dice, which allows you to get more resources. Now you want to make sure the resource track is opened up, so you're going to want to put... Um, you're going to want to deploy your morale resources. We're going to get morale. It's a, it's an engine, right? It's kind of an engine building. You're building the engine for the Federation here, the economic and military engine. Um, the resources now, I looked at these here, kind of the resource pool, the resource track, stored resources. I want to talk about locked assets because what the locked assets are as you build, because you can kind of see these little arrows, hopefully. What this means is, for instance, say, because this is not a ton of resources to start with. Well, say I build this base right here. This would be a construction base or a build base, production base, whatever you want to call it. Well, what I can do, so I'm building it on, you know, one of my planets, say I build it here, which building them, you have to have a flagship. A flagship can move to that spot, and then you go ahead and get rid of the flagship. You can build it, okay? Flagship goes to unbuild assets. Now I have that base. What happens is, see the arrow? Everything that was here unlocks. So the two resources, the two build resources, end up in the resource pool. This extra flagship goes to unbuild assets. And then this unresearched technology goes to the unresearched technology box. So as you're building bases, you're gaining access to more resources. So not only are you rolling more dice to get more resources, you're actually unlocking more resources that go into the resource pool, along with more flagships and more technologies you can research. Again, the key is you're building up your engine, right? Time goes by, you're building up this engine, this uh, economy, right? The Federation economy, you're building it up. And if you have more colonies, right? You have more bases, makes sense. You're gonna have more resources, you have access to more resources, et cetera, et cetera. Um, last thing on here I'll cover is technology. So you start off with just one. As you build bases, you get more, they're randomized. And then what you do is you're gonna go ahead and spend, you know, one of the little beakers. Oh, where did I have one? Oop, little. Um, research you go ahead and spend that bad boy and you're gonna be able to flip one of the technologies over what you do is you pick two of them flip two over choose whichever one you want you might say okay this is the one I want um, which this technology would help you in battle help you fighting and you go ahead you place it on the zero percent on the track and then every time you spend an additional research token resource you're gonna go ahead and roll and it'll tell you maybe move over two, move over one don't move over, except move back one, etc. Hopefully you get to 100%, and then you gain access to that technology, and it goes over to the research technologies. So let's go um, back to the main board. Let's kind of draw a couple chits just so you guys can kind of see things in action and kind of how the game works. All right, so I'll go ahead and kind of run through some actions, just kind of demonstrate, um, then we'll dive into my final thoughts. But let's go ahead and draw a couple so we have the beginning of the uh, game we have everything all set up um, according to setup kind of a neutral situation we have our draw cup we're looking at our activation queue down here and what we're doing very simple we're just drawing from it we're going ahead and we're looking we're finding these uh little icons here and we're just setting them down and we're setting them on the track right oh and you know what let me explain them quick as i go actually so this is a mercenaries and that's a greed which means that this would reduce that, uh, would send them towards total war. Um, this is the Chthonians, it's a technology action, which means if they are at cold war or higher or lower, whatever, 
whatever you prefer. Um, they would gain a technology. This is a galactic event, which means the fast scouts activate if there are any on the map, which there are none at the beginning, I'll tell you that. This is the mutants advance. So this would be if the mutants are at war or total war, they would advance against me. Oh, and that would be my turn, Federation turn. So um, to start off with, obviously, as I kind of explained, none of the actions right now are going to uh, uh, matter right now. Um, the reason is because it's the very beginning of the game. Everyone's pretty weak. Or, excuse me, everyone's at peace. There's not really, you know, any fleets on the board. So everything starts off pretty mellow. It's as time goes by, turns develop. So, for instance, I said the mercenaries greed, right? Well, they're already at Total War, so they don't worry about that. Um, the Chthonians here, they are not at um, Cold War or higher. They're all at peace. Everyone's at peace except for the mercenaries. So they're going to go ahead no effect again no effect again no effect i know it seems like well no effect what are you talking about because at the very beginning of the game trust me eventually all these things are going to matter except for the greed may not as much because um they're <laughs> the mercenaries are usually at war with you anyway trust me because they start off at total war all right so then we do our turn so just like i kind of had mentioned before um we have this our little icon and it tells you how many dice to roll or i should say it tells you per resource how many dice to roll it's either going to be a one, one die, which means you roll one die per resource, or resource, not resource. The wrenches, right? Those like wrenches and gears. So per gear, you roll a die. Um, if it, it may say this die minus one, which means every one of your die would be negative one, um, or it may be two dice here, which means for every gear, you'd roll two. So on our very first turn, and I hadn't, I hadn't picked out the random. You're supposed to do random resources as well over here. Like... And um, over here, that was my bad. I didn't get those picked up. So, all right. So what you would do is you go ahead and roll. Right now, all we have is soul system with one gear. So we would just roll one die. A two. So you find the two spot. Right now, it's taken up. So we don't get anything. But we go ahead and we slide everything down by one. So you can see where, because I rolled a two, I didn't even get a resource this turn. And this is why you want to open up those extra columns as fast as possible. So first Federation turn, I might say, hmm, I definitely want to, first of all, I'm going to open up that column. Remember, because I'm going to deploy a morale resource. I have it in my stored resources from the beginning. Put it there. So now next turn, as I go, I'm going to have two columns to deploy resources to. Um, oops, let me kind of move the camera a little bit for you guys. So you guys can kind of see over here. All right. Um, I have a build. I have a maneuver. I have a research. And I have diplomacy. Now, what well, you could do a couple things. I could say, well, I want to take a my maneuver research or my maneuver resource. Excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and select my flagship here. You can see he's right here at Seoul. And I'm going to go ahead and move him to Kutera. Now, if I had a build, which I do have a build resource, but I'm not going to use it for that. I could use a build resource and I could convert that flagship into a base and I can pick any of the bases I want. And then remember, we'll do that whole deal where we'll put all the resources into the resource pool, the technology over to undiscovered technologies, etc. But what I'm going to do, going back over, I do have that um, build resource. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and spend it. So it goes back in the resource pool. And then I'm going to build Soul's defenses. So basically, as you can see, it has two shields on there, or excuse me, two swords, like cross swords, and it has one of those gears icon. I had to go ahead and place it on Soul. Now, in the future, Soul System, by even though I haven't colonized anywhere else, Soul System already has two different gears. So now we get to roll two dice, one for each gear, as well as it has an additional, it already had a cross swords, but now it has another one. So that's additional rolls, additional dice for combat when or if Soul is attacked. Um, going back over, let's see. I have a research and a um, diplomacy. I may say, okay, I have the research. Uh, let's keep that in stored. I'm going to say hang on to that. And then the diplomacy, ah, I'm going to spend that. So what we can do is we can look over at our war effort board. And what I'm going to do with diplomacy, I'm going to establish an embassy. And what that does is it reduces the chances of them moving towards war against me. Very simple. Pick somebody, which I know I'm going to colonize um, Kutera my next turn, or maybe not next turn, but soon. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and place a Diplomacy under the Flesh Eaters. Katera's in red. That's some Flesh Eaters. So I find them over here. I'm going to place it underneath on the Cold War spot. Now, if any action would cause them to move down, right, to cause their political status to go from peace to Cold War, I would first roll a die. This is a contested results table to see if, do they stay at peace? Do they move to Cold War? Do they stay at peace, but I lose my embassy? Basically, they're sick of me, though. Etc. Etc. So, fun different options you have. Um, looking at the board, I think that's probably it for me, right? I think so. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. So that's it for the Federation turn. So now we grab up all these tokens, put them back in our cup, and go ahead and draw. Now, um, what we're looking at now, the game. I'm, I'm only going to do this a little bit more because I, I kind of want to. I want to do a full playthrough, right? So I want you guys to see it in action there. But I want you guys to have a general idea, right? Of You're drawing each turn. You're looking. Okay, Chthonian technology. Well, they're at peace, blah, blah, blah. Now, let's skip ahead. Now, you may say, well, it seems like nothing's happening. Like, Well, again, these first couple turns, they're a little slower, right? Things have to roll. But say I had had a flagship in Pizella. Or, yeah, Pizella up here in the um, Chthonian territory. Now I go ahead and I build a base. So I can put a base there, which I'm not going to grab one. Just pretend it's a base. <laughs> well, now if you look over here, they dropped to Cold War. So now their political status went from peace to Cold War. So they don't like it. They don't like that I established a base in their territory. Can you blame them? So now, let's say when they draw that technology marker, you go ahead and you look over here where they are. Boom, technology. Oh, so it does work. So now it does take effect. So now you go ahead and you find their stack of technology. Draw a random one. In this case, it's espionage is minus one against them. And you go ahead, basically, you know, they're better against espionage. Go ahead, place that in this, along this row right here at the highest number. Boom, their technology has gone up. As the turns go by, you're going to find them dropping, right? You're going to find, uh-oh, uh-oh. You're going to start losing stuff. And next thing you know, you're at, you know, total war with the mercenaries. You're at war with the Chthonians. You have a cold war with three other factions. It's just as time goes by and you're building up your strength and you're building bases and events happen. Because there's going to be random events that happen. Um, the random events, which I don't even think I covered the random event board. I think I skipped over it, didn't I? <laughs> I just realized that. So let's look at that quick too, by the way. Um, it's up here. So let me see if I can kind of this a little bit um like i said usually you do the overhead but for this game for this with all the different boards i'm going to cover the tripod so super simple um when you get when you pick a certain chit which if i can find it in here um you know what I can't find it doesn't matter basically it says hey there's gonna be a galactic event look up here on the event board you're gonna draw a random event it's gonna be something like oh hey it's gonna be this one which is foreign relations there, there we go. You go ahead and place it here, and you can see there's a chart 1d6. You're gonna go ahead and roll on that, and then it's gonna tell you hey, maybe there's a military alliance, maybe there's you have to spend an espionage, maybe there's a failed alliance, you know, nothing happens, etc. etc. So, um, there's a lot of different pieces to the board here. I know I only kind of touched on the surface, but that's all I want to show for now. I'm gonna have a full playthrough soon, otherwise, uh, hold tight for my final thoughts. Whew. All right, Space Infantry Federation. Let's catch our breath, everyone. There's a lot to go over, and we barely scratched the surface. Okay, we may have scratched the surface. Um, I hope that my overview <laughs> was very kind of broad overview. Really, at least give you a general idea how the game works, right? The fact that, you know, you're playing the Federation, you are starting to build up from just soul, you're moving out, you're starting to colonize worlds, you're building up your economy, um, building up that engine, you're gathering more resources as turns go by. At the same time, as time goes by, the longer things take to happen, you know, your relations with the other aliens are going to start deteriorating. The Cybers, the Chthonians, the Mutants, the Flesh Eaters, and even the Mercenaries, although it starts off a total war. Um, you know, those relations start deteriorating. Those fleets sh show up. The, they start moving, they start moving closer, they start either, you know, attacking your bases, they start moving towards Seoul, um, they're going to come off the board here, 
as I know this, you're managing your technology, you're managing your resources. There's a lot to this game. Um, so this is my review part. Let's talk about the things I didn't like, and then we'll go into all the things I did like. Um, the things I didn't like, the things I kind of was a little, had a little trouble with. So first off, the iconography. Um, I'm sure it, you're probably thinking the same thing. If you haven't played this game yet, if you have, you're probably looking at it going, whoa, Wayne, that's a lot of symbols. It's a lot of stuff to remember. I don't know. Here's the deal. Yes, the iconography, it can be, I want to say it's a problem, but it's a hurdle, right? So when you're going through and you're looking at all these little chits and you're pulling these and you're saying, wait, what is that? Well, that means, um, that's a, uh, is that a, I can't even remember what it is. Um, that's border friction. That's what it is. That's Federation turn. Okay, cool. All right, another border friction. No big deal there. Um, oh, that's the mercenaries greed. Okay. Um, all right, what's this? Oh, this is the flesh eaters spawn, which they would spawn a fleet, assuming that they are at uh, mobilize or higher. Uh, what about this one? Oh, this is the mutants advance. Now, I can name off the top of my head, except for border friction for some reason I couldn't remember. But even then, see, that shows you. This is a, a galactic event. What does it mean, though? Which type of event? Oh, it's a war event. Okay, yep. Okay, it took me to play this game, right? Here's a fast scout event. It took me playing in this game over and over to really get used to all these. Um, galactic conflict. Advance, etc., etc. There's just a ton of different events, and they're all on these little chits. Now... What maybe could have been a little better is if they had card draws and it would say the name of it. So instead of just having this symbol and arrow above a planet, maybe it would say flesh eaters, you know, spawn a fleet. And then it would have the rules for that on the card. I could see that because what, how many, how many of these are there? Maybe 50, 40, 50, maybe, maybe it could have been a deck of cards, right? 40, 50 cards. And you just flip over a card and then it tells you what to do. And you just keep flipping until you get to a Federation card. You resolve, then your discard pile goes back into the draw deck whatever. Uh, that's an example, right? Just off the top of my head. Um, so the iconography can be a little, little thick sometimes, a little hard to get used to. Eventually though, you're going to get used to it. You know, the different resources, you know, the names are not any of them, right? You just got to try to remember espionage, diplomacy, build, maneuver, morale, research, warp. Like you're not going to remember that at first. It's going to take a little time. Um, the second thing that I want to mention, there is some errata. So the rule book, is good -ish, not great um, and then there is some errata so it turns out there was a little bit of a misprint um, the bases all the bases all these resource bases like this should have one of the swords on for, on the front of it and then on the back of it you can see this like shield icon that really isn't in the game at the current or it shouldn't be it's supposed to be um, double double sh cross swords so for instance if you look at soul you can see that's double cross swords. Um, so, and then you look at a, I'm trying to find something else, like a flagship. You can see this, what's well, a, yeah, hang on. This flagship has triple cross swords. So that's that much more powerful, powerful, which makes sense, right? Triple cross swords, double cross swords. The only problem is the errata is that all these bases should have had a cross, should have had a single sword on the front to show they can defend themselves. And then on the back, instead of that shield icon, it should have been the two swords crossed. So a little bit of a rat something you have to remember as you're playing. Um, the designer though has been fantastic answering questions. So that's my other thing that I kind of like, eh, there's the rule book, not perfect. There's some mistakes. There's also some mistakes with the numbering. So you'll be looking through, which I've labeled mine because I was using it so much. Um, there'll be some, sometimes it'll say, you know, okay, check 7.11. And that may not be it. Um, for instance, here, in fact, that is one. Advance effect. C 7.11 advance on page 14. Now, it is on page 14, but advance is actually 6.11. So the numbers are off there. Off by one. Not the end of the world. Just something to be aware of. All right. So I've said the things that I kind of, you know, either didn't love or that were a little bit of a stumbling box, especially when you're new. Um, or things were just mistakes like the errata, the errata on the counters. It happens, but it did happen, and I do want to acknowledge it. That said, I absolutely love the game. So once you're used to the game, and it's going to take some time. Okay, this isn't a 
10 minutes in, you're going to be flying. No, give it, give it an hour, give it an hour and a half. Um, because the key, and this is why it's so hard to explain, right? And why this is the type of game that it's hard to do a quick overview is that there's so many things happening all over the place um, that, and everything ties together, right? So like when I talked about, you know, building a base and you, un, you know, you unlock the base and you put it there, then those other assets, you know, the resources go into the resource pool, the, the flagship goes into your unbuilt assets and you can start, you know, you can roll more dice to get more resources. And as you build a base, you have to go ahead and knock down the war effort for them. So literally, you know, hey, very simple, right? I spend a resource. I move my flagship from Seoul to here. I spend, you know, I spend a maneuver resource to move. I spend a build resource to build a base. Well, that was simple. And then it's almost like a domino effect of things happening. Don't forget to reduce that war effort by one. Um, don't forget to, you know, well, you grab your base, right? Of course, you pick whatever base you want. You know, what kind of resources do you want access to right now? You get extra technologies. Um, it just, there's all these things that start building together. And then you're going to start drawing these shits. And you're going to have random events. You're going to have, you know, uh-oh, random event time. And you don't know where you're going to get. You could get where the enemies at war with each other, like I said, which could be a good thing, right? Because it distracts them from you. But also they may mobilize in their own war, which then they may attack and your base may suffer a hit because they're at war. You know what I mean? They're in a war footing style. Even though they're not at war with you, your base being in their territory kind of eh, collateral damage style, right? All those things go together. Um, this game, I said to this to the designer, I messaged him, I said, I think you did a fantastic job on this game. It has a feel of a 4X game. Um, maybe more of a 3X, right? Because there's not a whole lot of exploration, right? You don't you know what the names of the planets, you don't, you don't go there and like flip a tile over and it's a certain, you know, oh, it's a different type of planet. Okay, you don't have that. But for what you have here, you get a lot of gameplay in the Ziploc bag, right? It all came in this little Ziploc bag. You're getting kind of like a Space Empires 3X simulation. Um, you know, starting as just soul, expanding from there, building up your forces. And think of, and it's not just, uh, a battle game, right? This isn't just they're attacking you constantly and that's it. You, I love the, the fact you start off at peace and it goes towards war. First of all, it gives you a chance to build up. You're not immediately under assault um, by everybody. So it's a, it kind of takes away that aspect of like every game you start, you're immediately back against the wall. I like the fact that, you know, you may end up back against the wall, but it's not going to be the first couple turns. Um, it lets you build up. I love that. It has, it has that feel of playing, you know, a simulation game, a civilization game on your computer, playing, you know, Stellaris on the computer where you are building up this galactic empire, at least in a, you know, a board game scale, right? Like it doesn't have hundreds of actual planets. It only is going to have this little board here, but it has that feel, you know, you're going to discover new technologies um, and you can decide what you want to do. Do you want to build up more resources? Do you want to build up towards technologies? Do you want to focus on building extra flagships? Um, et cetera, et cetera, right? You prioritize as the leader of the Federation, you prioritize where you want to commit your resources to achieve your goal. Yeah, you have, you know, there's one way to win. As far as I remember, there's one way to win, which is colonize. So you'd have one goal, you know, there's not different ways to win, but at the same time, there are some different paths you can take, different ways you can defend yourself to make sure you survive long enough to colonize all those planets. So I love this game huge fan of it. I kind of thought I would just seeing what it was and kind of my initial reading. I was like, I bet I'm going to love this game. And I truly do. Um, I cannot recommend this one enough. If you want a more in-depth States of Siege game, if you don't mind a little bit of table uh, spread here. So I'd say it's probably what it's a little bit bigger than a, so, you know, like normal maps are what 24 by 34, 22 by 34, something like that. Right. It's probably more like 38 wide and then like 24, 26 tall it may only be 24 tall when i and i have my spread you can set it up however you want i this is i think the rule book recommends it this way i think and this is the way i like it because i have the center board and i have easy access you know left right handed to wherever i need to go and i have room for my dice tower here as i'm rolling dice so i know i get to cover everything in my overview i did not cover everything in my review but there's just a whole lot to this game a couple mistakes here and there some errata uh, on the counters some errata in the rule book Okay, yep, let's be honest, it did happen. Um, but when you learn the iconography and you learn how this engine works, you're going to love this game. I really think so. Let me know below if you're interested in it. Please, I encourage you to check it out because I, I, I want this type of game to succeed. I think uh, Nathan Hansen, great designer. Um, he did The Chosen Few. 
for victory point games so he's had you know really solid design before i don't know anything else he's done but i'm sure he's done other stuff as well um, i'd love to see more from him so let's go ahead and make sure this one is a success so comment below if you like this video if you like the look of this game let me know what you think and uh, let me know if you pick up a copy and how you like it so till next time guys later